In today's video, I'd like to give you some tips for writing for strings and woodwinds. Let's take a listen to the piece that I composed for this video, and then I'll break it down. Okay, so that was the piece. Um, the way this started was with a piano sketch. I can turn on the MIDI for the piano. And I wanted to compose a piece that was in 3-4 and using a major key. There's no chromaticism here. Um, this is purely diatonic. So I'm sticking entirely in G major, which gives it a little bit of a classical sound. Also, some of the harmony um, is a little bit old school. But it's it so in in that sense it doesn't necessarily sound like something you might hear out of a modern Hollywood blockbuster. But I think that this was a good exercise for me in once again just writing for strings. And there's woodwinds being layered on top of it. But this was really an exercise in the, in writing a theme and orchestrating it and trying to keep things a little bit smaller rather than relying on a huge massive orchestra to fill out my sound. I wanted to work on some orchestration and some theme writing. So the piece started with an eight bar melody that I wrote. Let me solo the piano and just give you a little preview because you're going to recognize it from the piece that I just played. But the original theme sounds like this. So this is eight bars using the period form. There is a initial idea here starting on G major. We go to the five chord of F major in first inversion. Then there is the six chord, the six minor chord, and then it ends on the major five chord in root position. Um, then the basic idea repeats itself on G major. This time, instead of going to the major five, it goes to the major four, to the C major chord, which then leads back to the major five, back into the major one, giving it a very classic traditional cadence sound. And this D major chord here is a D dominant seven with the C in the melody there, um, referencing the sort of classic traditional uh, authentic cadence sound. So this might sound a little bit classical, but I think it was a good exercise in taking a relatively um, non big and massive piece with a ton of moving parts and trying to find a way to make it interesting. So the first thing I wanted to do was to think about for this exercise, like how did I want the whole piece to go? So it started with this initial theme and then I wrote this, uh, B section, which is just essentially four bars of hovering around some chords in G major, trying to use some rhythmic ideas that I had already used before to play around and get something interesting. It moves up in register to go away from where we've been prior. And then there's a repeat of the final theme um, with the melody in octaves and the uh, accompaniment has changed a little bit, just a little bit to give it some contrast. And then there's this outro. So it's really simple in the sense that we're starting with our A theme, which goes for eight bars. We've got a four bar 
B, B section, and then a repeat of the main theme with a little bit of different orchestration, but the harmony and the melody are pretty much exactly the same. And then just a short little outro. And then the last thing I added was I thought that this piece needed a little bit of an intro before we hopped right into the melody. So there is this intro theme here, which is just taking some of the ideas from the melody and then introducing some counterpoint, trying to work mostly with thirds and sixths, but also um, just keeping in mind that this is an intro. So I wanted to keep things very, very soft and light. So let's break down the piece um, as far as the actual orchestration. I don't want to spend too much time on the piano. So yeah, like I said, the piece starts with this intro and I'm making use of a very common orchestration technique that's used a lot in intros, but it's used a lot just in all different types of circumstances. But I'm just using a, a high pedal note on the violins, holding down on our tonic on G. It sounds like this. Just to sustain, nothing, nothing too crazy. And then I wanted to, before I introduced any sort of strings playing the melody, I wanted solo clarinet. Um, I thought that it was a good register for the clarinet to play this intro melody. And then there's a second clarinet playing off of it with the counterpoint to finish off the intro. And so you combine those, it's just three different, three different parts together and you get this sound. A nice little reference to uh, D sus four chord at the end there, um, which sets us up to head right back into G major. So as we move into the next, the, the first iteration of the A theme, the, um, the strings really do take over here. So I put the main melody on violas for the first half of the theme, for the first four bars. I kind of split this theme into the first four bars, the second four bars, change the orchestration a little bit. So the violas are playing the melody and I've got the celli playing the bass and there's really no counterpoint or anything going on as far as accompaniment in the first half of the theme other than the harp is just playing some arpeggiated chords here. Um, and then I, all I did was just layer the cor anglais to, with the violas uh, for the melody. Um, but yeah, if I grab the midi from the cor anglais, the harp, violas, and the celli, that really makes up the entirety of this first four bars. So let me just play that and take a listen to what that sounds like with, with the introduction. And then as we move into the second half of the theme, things do start to get a little bit more interesting. The first thing I did was I took the bass line and instead of just holding down dotted half notes, um, we move into quarter notes. And this plays a very consistent pattern. And I think this is one of the, the key takeaways that I had. I was trying to make this almost too interesting by having the, the line be moving up and down and have a sort of emotional cello line. But what I came back to is this idea that um, this really repetitive in nature bass line was actually going to give the piece a little bit of continuity and stay out of the way of the melody and also allow me to add in another piece, which you'll see I add. So there's, there are three unique components here and part of what allows there to be three unique components in the second half of this first iteration of the theme is the fact that whilst the bass line has changed and increased its rhythm a little bit, it actually is very, very simple in so far as it's just going it's starting on whatever the root of the chord is. And then instead of going up a fifth, it's going down a fourth, but this is still the fifth of the chord. So it's just root, fifth of the chord, root, fifth of the chord. And that goes all the way through the end of the theme. Um, as we go from D major to e minor to C major to D major, the D dominant seven up to G major. So the cellies, the, the celli are doing that. And whilst the, the melody has now moved up in register a little bit, so I brought it in on the first violins. So if I grab the, the MIDI from the first violins and the celli, we can take a look at the space here. So this is the, the second half of that main theme. And now you can see that there's a little bit of space here to be filled out. So in order to keep this growing and moving, I added in a counter line, which is being played first on second 
uh, second violins, but then it gets a little bit too low in register, so it moves back down to the violas. But that counter line is just this falling descending line here. So now if I grab the uh, string section minus the basses um, and look at the MIDI, let's take a listen to what this sounds like and what it, what it looks like in MIDI form. So it's, it's not a ton going on, but there's now three unique components compared to the fact that there were only two in the first half of this theme. So it does, it does feel like there's notable growth. Um, so yeah, let, let's take a listen to the end of the first half of the theme and then just listen to how it sounds as it moves into the second half. So yeah, that's what that sounds like. And then I've got the I've got a bassoon layering the cello with this moving uh, bass line, and then I've got the clarinet leading down into the bassoon into the into uh, one clarinet leading down into another bassoon doing the counter line that you saw in the second violins and in the violas. And this time the clarinet takes over for the cor anglais. Uh, layering with the first violins. So everything here with the with the woodwinds is in unison with the strings. It's just about matching register and seeing what worked well. And I wanted to keep this piece very soft and not be super bitey. Um, so I stayed away from flutes, partly because it would have been a little low in their register, but I also made a very conscious decision to stay away from oboes. Um, there's a sort of, it's very pleasant, but there's a sort of nasally sound to an oboe that I wanted to stay away from a little bit. So let's listen to the first half of this, or, or the first iteration of this theme in full now, and we'll look at the MIDI from the, um, let me get rid of the harp. We'll look at the MIDI from the woodwinds this time. <laughs> And then the piece moves into the short little B section here. Um, it moves up in register and goes to only strings. I think that this is one of my favorite parts of this short little piece. I like that it's a nice little break and there's some references to some of the uh, rhythms that we've seen already in the piece that I think help make it really feel like it this belongs. But it's a nice little transition without going straight into the second iteration of the A theme to give your ear a little bit of a break. So. As we move this here, we go from B to C to E to D. There is a reference to, if we if we open up the MIDI for the first violins, second violins, and the celli, we can sort of see that we're, we've ended this theme on our G major, and we've moved now to a sort of B minor sound. So we've moved to this B minor, which is the minor three, um, which is going to, because of the fact that it shares this B um, and the G in B minor, it's going to help it really feel like we're still staying at home and that it's a natural place to, to start again. It would be like as if we were going back to G major, but this time it's minor, so it, it, it has just a little bit of a twist. We go up into... Uh, C, S, <laughs> I don't know, whatever you want to call this chord. Um, you could call it a C sus two if you want. I don't, I don't really even know. This is sort of just playing around with counterpoint. Um, and then back up into an E minor sound, and then it resolves back down into D to set us up to go back to G major. So this is just playing around with some rhythmic ideas we've already seen. But let's take a listen to what this B section sounds like with the MIDI now so that you can see what's going on here. And uh, this, this green color here is going to be the second violins. This is going to be our cellos. This is going to be the first violins. <laughs> And that sort of fades out, um, and then we s move into the second iteration of the A theme. And this time, the basses come in and take over the bass line. They are just holding down the dotted quarter note, or excuse me, the dotted half note. Um, and the, a solo bassoon plays the melody the first time here. Um, and then th what I've added is a little bit of a new counter line in the celli here. That's this part here. 
So this is a little bit softer um, and maybe you would expect it to naturally grow, but there's something about, I think this counter line that's working with the melody um, on top of this sort of impact of the basses playing the bass line now that I think is a really nice transition into the second half of the A theme um, before, before we wrap things up. But let's take a listen to what this sounds like. And then this time we go back. We, this, is, this is a strong reference to what we've heard before, but this time we've got the melody in octaves. So we've got the first violins and the violas taking over the melody in the second half of this theme. This was just about fitting register. The, uh, the reason I went with the violas, not the second violins, was just because I thought the melody worked a little bit better for them. So the second violins don't even come back. They're only uh, in this first half of the theme here. Um, and the B section, they don't even come back again. Um, so it's got the first violins, the violas, and then the celli return back to their quarter note pattern in the bass line. Um, and we can take a look at these strings and how they're a little bit fuller now with the bass and with the melody and octaves. Things have sort of really filled out. We've gone higher, we've gone high in register than we did in the first time that we went through the theme here. Um, and we've also got the bass, basses down here. Um, and then it was just about layering things with, with the woodwinds. Um, so once again, clarinets are being layered with first violins and violas, just sort of playing the melody in unison. Bassoons are doing the bass line stuff, and the harp is just an exact repeat, to be completely honest with you. Um, so let's take a mi look at the MIDI again from the strings and listen to the full, uh, the, the, the second iteration of this A theme in its entirety. Um, to see how I went about repeating this whilst at the same time changing just enough that I think that this sounds like definitely a little bit of progression. This isn't meant to be like massive. Um, it's meant to be, I, I was inspired to write this piece by the emotion uh, or the word somber was what came to mind when I started to write this piece. I wanted to write something that felt somber. So I didn't want it to massively grow and feel hugely impactful um, in that sense. So there's no percussion or anything. Um, no brass, it's just a little bit of growth to keep things interesting, whilst at the same time maintaining a very real sense of sort of repetitiveness uh, in, in the piece. So let's take a listen to what this sounds like. And then for the outro, there's essentially a, just a full repeat of the, the theme being played on bassoons and the celli go back to taking over the bass. I wanted the outro to be very smooth and soft. The only difference here is that the first two iterations of the theme, uh, when we ended on our G major chord, we ended with a B being the highest note being played, being the note that was played in the melody. So I go to the bassoons here. What we had done the first two times, let me make sure I only grab the bassoon. Um, what we had done the first two times was gone back, for, gone from this A back up to the B. But in order to give it the real sense of completion, I wanted to end things just on a G. So as we play this theme, the second half of the theme again, this time it does go back to the G as the cellis move up to this G. So we just get a, one note being played in unison, which I think gives it a real sense of ending. So yeah, we've got the, the bassoons and the celli. That's it for the outro. Let's just take a listen to what that sounds like. <laughs> You know, I could have, if, if I want, I was debating whether or not to add the, the cellis to have them go down an octave, but. It was a little too much. <laughs> um, so, I, so I left it the way it was. Um, I should also note just for the sake of mixing to fill things out a little bit, because I was a little bit too lazy to fill things out with um, ensemble patches, which is something I like to do a lot and is a very common technique that you'll see across YouTube tutorials for sort of filling out your sound. I exported the the audio from MuseScore, which is where I did the orchestration. 
Um, so this is effectively acting as my ensemble. I can grab this. This is the this is the audio coming out of my notation software. It's pretty quiet, but it does give it a, a sense of body, and it allows me to really pan things out really wide. So I've got like the first violins panned really hard left, and that might be a little bit aggressive without this effective ensemble holding things down in the middle and gluing things together. Um, but yeah, that that makes up the the basis of the piece. I would say the big takeaways here were to just think about a f strategic doublings, thinking about putting. Um, lines in ranges and registers of the instruments that worked, being intentional about the instruments I chose for the emotion I was trying to evoke, staying in a very soft dynamic throughout the entirety of the piece. And when I wanted things to be most busy, trying to follow the rule of never having more than three unique lines or three different things happening at one time. And when there are three different things happening at once, trying to keep at least one of them, if not two of them, pretty darn simple. Um, to keep things from clashing too much and being too complex and too confusing. As far as mixing that went into this piece, there's just a little bit of basic EQ. I use cinematic rooms for reverb to glue the different libraries together. Um, and then the master has just a little bit more EQ along with a limiter. And so that will be it for today's video. I hope you learned something and found this interesting. And I hope that it was, if you're a beginner, learning how to compose for strings and woodwinds, Looking at things in the MIDI role, in the piano role, could be a little bit helpful for you in thinking about how to go about spacing out your different voices. I hope that thinking about just in terms of having an intro, an A section, a B section, and an A section is a phenomenal way to, if you're stuck just having like 20 seconds of music and you want to get to a minute and a half, maybe this is something to think about. Um, I know I didn't go super in depth on everything, but I wanted to just touch on everything, let you see as much of the piano roll as you could so that hopefully for people who are really struggling to really actually create something orchest with orchestral music that actually sounds like real music um, and that lasts them more than 20 seconds, that this was a good sort of motivation for you and maybe gave you some ideas to go spark your creativity. So that is going to be it for me for now. I hope you all have a very nice day. Take care.